Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew Eggert, and today I would like to explain the process of securitization, particularly for mortgage-backed securities. So to give some history, to give some context, Fred and Megan here are interested in applying for a mortgage to purchase a home and uh, start a family. So they both have well-paying jobs, they have good credit scores, so they saved up the money for the down payment, and now they're working on applying for a mortgage for the rest of the cost of the house. So they contact a bank for a loan. The bank reviews is Fred and Megan's situation. They review their credit scores, their income, and uh, their reliability, and they think that they will be good borrowers. So the bank loans Fred and Megan the cost of the mortgage, $300,000. So the bank gives Fred and Megan that money, and in return, Fred and Megan make monthly payments to the bank to repay that loan. So with securitization, this process kind of changed because these assets, uh, this mortgage, for example, is very illiquid. So eventually, uh, Joe comes along here, and Joe's interested in getting a mortgage for $400,000. Bank says, yay, more money, and they give Joe the mortgage. And then comes along Frank. Frank wants a mortgage He uh, for $500,000. Good credit. Bank sees him and says, hey, more money. Let's go for it. So now all of these individuals are paying monthly payments to the bank, and the bank wants to be able to make some money off of this, so they want to sell these mortgages to investors. So this is where the process of securitization comes into play. Essentially what they want to do is they want to pull these mortgages. So they get all these other mortgages right here in this stack and uh, they add Frank, Joe, and Megan's mortgage to the pool. They just throw them in here anywhere and uh, boom, we have a pool of mortgages. And so now that they have this mortgage pool, they want to begin making money off of this so there's some investors here that are interested in buying some uh, some shares out of this pool so that they get monthly returns on their investment. So the investors are buying out of the pool, but what the bank doesn't tell the investors, in this case relating to the financial crisis of, two th of 2008, is that there are some risky lenders within this pool. But they're kind of hidden because they're like at the bottom here. So you have a subprime mortgage here of an individual who is a little more risky and a little less likely to pay back that mortgage. But they can just hide it inside of this big old deck, you know, nobody's going to go through it, nobody's actually going to see it. So through the process of securitization, they pool the mortgage loans and they sell them to the investors to make money off of the process. So that's basically the premise, you know, the whole idea behind securitization. It's the process of converting assets or a group of assets into a marketable security. And, you know, any assets essentially can be securitized. As, you know, it's usually assets with a periodic cash flow, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. However, the mortgage-backed securities are one of the most popular forms of securitization and were very popular and one of the aspects that led to the financial crisis of 2008. Um, you know, the big benefit here is that one of these mortgages is pretty illiquid, but combining all of these mortgages and transforming them into liquid loans in a pool uh, allows investors to invest in them rather than just investing in one secure, excuse me, one loan that would be uh, more risk. Uh, but by pooling these, the investors have the idea that there's less risk. But again, in the case of how securitization can fail in the case of 2008, as illustrated in the big short, you can have a uh, set of mortgage-backed securities right here. And um, at the top, you have, you know, very good, very good loans, uh, not likely to go bust, but then they can kind of hide the rest of the loans within here. And if these individuals who took out the loans, if they fail to remake, to uh, make their payments back, then some of these pieces might come out here. This is illustrated in the big short. And then another individual fails, and this piece comes out. And then one more fails on this side. And then another one of these risky borrowers is unable to remake those payments. Through this process, through, uh, through time, eventually, more and more individuals are going to be unable to make the payments until the entire Jenga tower collapses. The Jenga tower is representative of the entire housing market. So when this happened, the process of securitization failed for investors, the subprime mortgage loans became too risky, and there became too many of them and led to this collapse. The process of securitization can be very beneficial for investors, so long as it is properly applied. In this case, it was not properly applied and adjustments have been made. 
But this is just one example of the process of securitization. As I said, there are many other ways and there are many other assets that can be securitized. securitized. So thank you for listening. I hope you all have a wonderful day and learn something from this educational video.